Good morning, class. Today we're going to start talking about Le Chatelier's principle. What is that? It's a set of rules that govern how the equilibrium will change when we make certain changes to that reaction. We'd already sort of learned about equilibrium when we talked about evaporation and condensation. And we had this water bottle and we mentioned there's a little bit of water in here. And of course, we're going to have some amount of that evaporating and we're going to have some rate of evaporation. And not only is it evaporating, but some of that vapor is going to condense and go back into the liquid phase. And when those rates no longer change, when the rate of evaporation is constant and the rate of condensation is constant, we're at equilibrium. But we also mentioned that certain things will affect that or change that. We could start heating up this liquid and give it more kinetic energy, in which case all of a sudden we're going to see the rate of evaporation increase until we reach some new equilibrium point. Um, so altering the temperature is one of the ways we can do that. We saw that piston moving with a gas in there, and we saw that if we change the volume, that's going to change the vapor pressure, and then essentially changing that rate of evaporation and that rate of condensation. So we're going to look at all those different things that will disturb equilibrium and how is it restored. So changing concentrations, changing temperatures, volume, pressure, etc. And that is called Le Chatelier's principle. It gives us a set of rules to predict how we're going to see that change in equilibrium. Are we going to see uh, the forward reaction increase or the reverse reaction increase? And that's going to be based on changing concentrations, altering volumes or pressures, or changing the temperature. It could be increasing the temperature or decreasing the temperature. So we'll go back to that population analogy. We have a country A and our country B. And again, we saw that some amount of people are going to immigrate from country A to B and vice versa. And at some point, we're going to probably hit an equilibrium where maybe every week, three people go from country A to country B and two people go from country B to country A. And once those rates of immigration are stable, we have an equilibrium. But of course, there's real world things that could affect this, right? We could have a drought in country B, and all of a sudden we might see the rate of immigration from country B to country E increase. So whereas it used to be three going this way and two going this way, the new equilibrium might be three going that way or only two going that way and five going the other way. Or we could all of a sudden have a war break out in country A, and of course if that happens we're probably going to see more people immigrating from A to B. So that's going to alter that rate of immigration until we reach some new equilibrium. So First thing that we're going to look at is the concentrations and the reactant. Uh, we could have multiple reactants. We could have A and B and C, and we could change the concentration of all of those, or we could change the concentration of only one. So we're going to start with adding a reactant. So again, these have to be components that are in the equilibrium equation. So no solids, no liquids. It has to be a gas or um, in a solution. Um, so... Um, no solids, liquids. It's got to be in that actual equilibrium equation. So if you think um, in terms of the equilibrium constant, K, we're not actually going to see K changing. So if we have A plus B goes to form C and D, then our equilibrium expression, again, let's say they're all gases, so we know they're all going to be involved in the equilibrium reaction. I'm going to have C raised to the C power and D raised to the D power, and over that, uh, A and B. So if K is always equal to 10, let's say all of a sudden we do something that makes the number on the bottom larger. So all of a sudden, K, or not K, but this equation is no longer equal to 10, but something less than 10. So if we increase the concentrations of A and B, or just A or just B, we're going to see the number on the bottom get larger relative to the number on the top. So we might get some value now other than 10, let's say 9. But we have to get back to 10. How are we going to do that? By using up more of A and B by making the number on the bottom smaller and creating more C and D, making the number at the top larger until we get back to our K. So adding reactant will not change the um, K. It will not affect the value of K because that is specific at that specific temperature. So if it's 10 at 25 degrees, it's always got to be 10 at 25 degrees. What it will do is, if I can get these slides to work, there we go 
what it will do is increase the rate of the forward reaction because we've got to make more product. We've got to get that number on the top to be larger than the number on the bottom again until the, so that that ratio of top to bottom is 10 to 1. So by adding reactants, we're going to push the reaction, I guess this way, push the reaction towards the product side or push it to the right. Um, so no change or effect in K, the equilibrium constant, and what we should see is an increase uh, in the rate of the reaction in the forward direction. What if we remove reactants? So let's think of the same thing. Let's go back to our whiteboard. Let's uh, erase some of these. So let's say uh, now we're removing reactants. So we're taking something away from the bottom. So the bottom number is going to get smaller. So suddenly our equilibrium is going to uh, go up, or that K, that equilibrium constant, is going to go up. So again, it can't actually change. We need to get to an equilibrium constant of 10 because it's specific for that reaction at that temperature. So if the number on the top is suddenly too large in comparison to the number on the bottom, how do we get it to go back to 10? We have to make that ratio shift down. So we have to decrease the number on the top and increase the number on the bottom until we get back to 10. How do we do that? We start using up products and making more reactions. So we're going to see the reverse reaction happening faster in these instances. So the reaction is going to shift to the left until we can get back to that 10 to 1 ratio. So we remove reactants. Again, no effect on the equilibrium constant, but the reaction is going to proceed to the left at a greater rate until the equilibrium is restored. We're going to produce more reactants or see the reverse happening at a faster rate until we hit that equilibrium again. Um, same thing if we started altering the product. So if we increase the amount of product, if we add product to the reaction, we're gonna make the number on top larger than the bottom. So the reverse reaction is gonna to have to occur until we reach equilibrium again. So think about wherever you add these uh, to the product side or the reactant side, but wherever you add within that reaction, what's going to happen is it's going to push it the other way. So if we write out our reaction again, we've got our oop, A, A, and B, B, and it goes this way. If I add some more A to this, since I added it to the left side, it's going to push it towards the right. Uh, think about it like a, a, an elevator or a room. If we start cramming, if we have two rooms that are adjoined and this room's already full of people and we start adding people from one direction, it's gonna push them out into the other room. Or same way if we add one or both of the products. If all of a sudden I come in here and I add some more C, that's gonna push it the other way. If we decrease, if I take away something, what that's gonna do is pull it in the direction that we took that away. So if we subtract some A from this, it's gonna pull it in the direction of the thing that we removed. So we're taking it out and it's pulling that reaction in that direction. Or then if we didn't remove a product, but instead removed a reactant, same way it's going to pull it, or a product, I'm sorry, if we removed a product, it's going to take it in the direction of that product that we removed. So removing a product shifts the reaction towards the product side or the forward direction. And none of those will have any effect on the equilibrium constant. So know how concentration affects that. So we'll look at some cartoonish examples here. We've got our NO2 and our NO4 here. The N2O4 is decomposing into NO2. So if we add more NO2 is what's going to happen. Well, we need to shift the balance back in the favor of the reactant. We're going to see more of those NO2s combining. The reverse reaction is going to be favored. We're going to produce more reactants until we get back to the equilibrium constant that we need to. So adding from one side pushes it to the other direction. And what does that look like here? 
Again, we see that we all have some in, uh, fixed concentrations at equilibrium. If we suddenly alter that, so in this initial yellow box here, we're at equilibrium. Now we add some of this NO2. We increase the reaction. We're going to need to alter that. So we're going to need to see this uh, concentration coming down, this concentration coming uh, up until we reach equilibrium again. Our final concentrations are different than what we started at, but their ratio should be the same. The equilibrium should be the same, and it lets us predict which one are we going to see decrease, which one are we going to see increase, which direction of that reaction is going to be favored. What if we increase the reactants? Now it's going to push it away from that side. So it's going to push it towards the product side. So we increase our N2O4. We're going to see a sudden shift, change. All of a sudden, that reaction is going to be favored in the forward direction more. So we're going to see more of those products being made. The products are going to increase. The reacting concentrations are going to decrease until we reach a new concentrations. But the equilibrium constant is identical. And the ratio of them then is also identical to whatever that K needs it to be. So I'm going to stop right there and keep this video short. We'll do another one. We'll look at how does this change when we affect the volume and when we affect the temperature. Hopefully this was helpful. I'll see you in the next video.